Today we've got an interview set up with AJ Andrews. We're going to do this through Zoom. Um, really appreciative for AJ joining us. AJ, how you been doing? I've been good. I think that, you know, I mean, despite the circumstances that are pretty unfortunate, it's definitely been a time where I could kind of wind down a little bit and settle into my feet and settle into some things that I wanted to get going that I maybe didn't have the time to do before. So quarantine life has not been bad for me. <laughs> well, that's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to expand on that? Talk about those things that you have been having a little bit extra time to focus on? Yeah, so I've been working on a podcast, also working on a show concept. And so doing a lot of those things that before I didn't really have time to to spend on as much. And so, yeah, for me, it's I personally, I love creating content, love doing a lot of different things. And so now I kind of have the time to really set this the time aside and focus on that and get those things done. So that's been, it's been really cool. Awesome. What's that podcast title? So it's right now, it's kind of up in the air with the name. So I, I do lives. They're called Hard Headed. And those are, you know, talking to some uh, softball players in the, they're some of the best in the country. But I, it may go into being Hard Headed or it may be another name that we were considering because I wanted to make this. Uh, video as well turn the the podcast into video so the name's up in the air but it should be decided pretty soon awesome awesome so what is one thing about all of this where we're forced to kind of i mean our lives have changed a little bit what's the one thing you miss the most hmm. maybe just uh, I was going to say like Taco Tuesday and, you know, just having a nice margarita yeah. every now and then. Um, that's probably, you know, the one thing. But I haven't, honestly, I would just say maybe just kind of always be on the go. I didn't realize how addicted I was to just being busy. And so the first week of quarantine, it was, it was just weird. I didn't really know what to do. And then I finally kind of got settled and, you know, realized this was truly an opportunity for me to achieve things that I didn't have time to achieve before. And I've really felt like I've kind of been flourishing in this time. So, but I would say, yeah, the thing I miss the most is just kind of being able to, to go out and, you know, be around friends and do different things that you, I guess you probably definitely took for granted. I, are you training by yourself or how's that looking? Yeah, I train by myself. So I do a lot of just my own workouts at home. I mean, a lot of things I've had a trainer in the past. So I do a lot of the same concepts or, you know, routines that he probably would have set me up with and just do it with what I have. So a lot of it's body weight. I do have some 30 pound weights and I have 10 pound weights. So just doing what I can with those and just trying to make it work. I think during this time, I'm going to be very a lean, mean machine until I can get back in the gym and really put on that muscle. But I'm going to lean it up in this time. <laughs> You're out there training and building podcasts and TV shows, and I'm sitting on the couch with chips. So you are besting a lot of us, and I think it's a testament to your work ethic. Well, thank you. It's okay. And you know what? I really feel like it is okay in this time to sit down and eat chips. I feel like this should be moments when people just digress, but I just that's just not the way my brain works. Could you walk us through, like, say today, what's that average day look like for you? Yeah, well, I'll wake up in the morning and I act like to meditate. So I'll wake up and I'll meditate. I like the sound of rain. So I'll either go meditate in the shower or I'll put on a rain noise in my room or something and just kind of take 15 minutes to myself to really dive into what I want to, the, my long-term goals and my short-term goals for that day. Then I'll get up and I'll get dressed and I will come out and I'll just write down what I want to get done. I'll write down, you know, my affirmations for the day and what it is I want to achieve. And then I'll just get to work on some of the things that I'm trying to get done that day. So whether it's editing video or focusing on content I want to create or just really giving myself a game plan for setting myself up for the next day. And then I'll go work out and then I'll hit a little bit off of the tee and throw, I mean, I'll hit off the tee and I throw by myself. So I'll just the balls I hit to the outfield, I'll pick a target and just try to hit that target every time I'm trying to throw them back. And so, yeah, I do that. And then I'll come back home and I will make either a protein shake or some type of really nice smoothie. And I'll, I forgot to, yeah, I eat in between that time too. I didn't mention that. I eat in between there at some point. And um, yeah, I just really try to make sure my days are as productive as possible and really set myself up for once everything kind of gets back to normal. 
yeah, that's that's impressive stuff right there. Uh, you're you're besting a lot of us. So, hey, have you heard any information about your season yet? A little bit. So some stuff has been canceled. We were actually supposed to start. We had preseason games actually this weekend. Uh, today was supposed to be our first game, and so then that clearly was canceled. And then we had games coming up in June, but due to the travel bans and different things like that, because there's a lot of foreign teams in the NPF league, those that schedule is going to be altered a lot. So currently, they they just told us that the schedule is going to be altered. Hasn't told us in what way yet, but it's definitely going to be a little bit different. But as far as the league that I'm going to be competing in in August called Athletes Unlimited, that one's still full go. Uh, nothing's changed yet as far as that league, but the NPF uh, right now, it's just the scheduling is going to be a little different. Okay. Um, and I know, I know baseball's discussed having maybe everyone gather in one location or gather back at the spring trainings in Florida and Arizona. Have they discussed doing something like that where they play the season all at one location? No, that's not, at least not for the MPF. That hasn't been a discussion. Uh, for the Athletes Unlimited, that's what it was going to be originally anyway. Everyone was going to be in Chicago. So I think that that one just works out perfectly. But as far as the MPF, because the team I'm on is in California, and then there's a Chicago team left, and then a Cleveland, I believe. And so it's going to be, I don't, I'm not sure what that looks like just yet. They haven't really said anything. Okay. Um, yeah. and, and say worst case scenario, you don't have a season. What would the what would that look like for you? Would you just kind of pivot into that podcast, the show, and all that going on? I mean, for me, I'm always going to be full go. I'm not going to allow any circumstance to kind of change, you know, my goals or what it is that I'm trying to achieve. It definitely would be very disappointing to not play. It's, it would be weird, but to know that I still had another season coming up in August is definitely something that will console me a little bit more and make me feel a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, if I don't have the season in, which would be June and July, I would just be moving forward with all the other things that I'm passionate about, really trying to get those green lit as much as I possibly can. Because I think sometimes you don't realize some things fall apart, so some things can fall together. And so I just, I'm just trying to see the positive in this situation and just see if maybe that that's what the case may be. Well, that's, that's a fantastic attitude. And um, if we can all find our way to see the positive in it, I think we'll see some really good things come from this. Now, now say you guys do play, um, but they keep fans back. How would you feel about playing a game with no fans in the stands? Personally, I don't feel, I think it would be, it's a little odd, right? It would be a little uncomfortable. I just, I feel like the first though, it would feel like that. But I think after a while, we would get used to it. I mean. The difference is with, I feel, women's sports, right? We are truly playing because we're passionate about the game, right? It doesn't come down to money. It doesn't come down to how many fans are in the stands. Of course, that matters. Of course, we want that. But we're truly playing because this is a game that we don't want to give up. And so I think that when you ask a softball player, all right, you get this chance to play, but no one can come, they're going to jump at, okay, well, let's play. Right, it's just, it's ingrained in us because we want to continue playing the sport that we love. So personally, I don't feel like it would be that much of a factor for many softball players as maybe baseball because, you know, they're feeding off of the fans. It is something that they're they're truly in tune with more because just the circumstance they're in is a little bit different than softball. So, but I think it would be, it would be okay. It'd be weird at first, but we would definitely get used to it and it wouldn't stop us from wanting to play the game. Yeah, and I mean, anytime you watch a softball game, there's a lot of chatter coming from the dugout. You've got your own fans sitting there on the bench next to you and a lot of Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, we're all our own biggest fans, and it's a lot of fun. Softball games are fun. <laughs> yeah, they are. And honestly, like, looking at this, and you look at, at an entire world deprived of sports right now, and sports is such a big deal in so many lives, I think there's a possibility, and I may be – over anticipating this but if softball was to come back and get tv cameras on the game you guys might actually see an increase in popularity as a result oh no i think there's no doubt about that i think the conversation where people say the chicken or the egg right is that you give them the exposure and then you have 
the fans and the more income or you wait till they have more fans and then you give them the exposure. But I think the best case study for that is college softball. At the end of the day, college softball is now the fourth highest revenue making sport behind the big three, basketball, baseball and football. And so the number one revenue making sport for women's sports. And that is all a testament to the fact that you see all those games on ESPN now. And that's happened over the last three years. And the first year in 2016, the World Series had more views, the Women's College World Series had more views than the Men's College World Series. And it also had more views than the Monday Night Baseball game in the MLB. And I think that, I truly believe that that is truly the best example you could have of the more you put softball on TV, the more people recognize and want to watch the game. And that's only increased, it's only gone up as far as viewership and as far as fandom ever since they begun to put softball on ESPN. And so now you have them documenting the entire process from regionals to super regionals to the World Series. So yes, I believe put the media attention on the game and you will see the results. Yeah, and I, 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 just, I get excited about showcasing some of the best athletes in the world. I mean, yourself included, because I mean, you watch those games and it's like lightning fast and it's crazy. Well, that was that was the list of stuff I wanted to get to. Um, I got a couple quick fun things I want to go through at the end just to give you a chance um, to to show off your personality of you such a great personality as we've seen when you came up here as well. Um, but do you have anything else you want to touch on with regards to softball before we get to those? I think this is truly a time where you can develop and realize who you are as a person and how that applies to who you are as a player. This is truly a moment to self-reflect and truly a moment to become mentally tough so that you, when you are able to get back out to being physically tough, you have mastered that because I think your mental toughness is probably 80, maybe 90% of your success as an athlete. And so, you know, I think any athlete that's feeling down in this moment, this is truly a moment where you can realize how you can get better watch video, right? Sit down and envision yourself succeeding or go out every single day and just swing. Don't even, you don't even need a bat. Just go out and work on the form, whatever it is that you want to be successful in the next year. This is your moment to document that and really work on it. And I think once we all come out of this situation, we're going to see who really put in that time and who didn't. So use this time to really get your mind prepared for the next season because there's always another AB and I want you to be ready to go. AJ, let's get to these quick, fun things and then we'll let you get on with your day. You're a busy person. Um, my couch is calling me, by the way, so I got to get back. <laughs> I completely understand. <laughs> All right, so you got like three seconds to answer these. Oh, no. Flags. Um, Gatorade or Powerade? Powerade. Uh, what's the fastest animal you could beat in a foot race? A cheetah. <laughs> regular or an electric toothbrush? I have a regular one. Uh, your dream car is? A uh, Mercedes um, G-Wagon, that's it, that's it, G-Wagon. Um, the furthest you've ever been away from home? Italy. Uh, how many jump ropes could you complete in a minute? Oh, a bunch. And I can do double unders. So maybe like a hundred. Who is your biggest fan? Who's my biggest fan? Uh, probably my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what MLB player do you think your game is most similar to? Like on the left side, outfield, maybe Jason Hayward. Okay. Oh, oh, that's even better than Kane. I only thought Kane because of his glove and his speed. But Hayward. well, Hayward's won a few gold gloves too. No, that's, yeah. a, that's a good, that's, <laughs> that's it, Jason Hayward. <laughs> well, AJ, uh, again, thank you so much for taking your time to do this. Um, everybody go follow her. We'll put all of her stuff in the descriptions. We'll put attributions over all of this, but AJ Andrews, she's awesome. AJ, you got any last words for us? Watch softball, watch and support softball. There we go. Awesome. Take care of yourself, AJ. Thank you for stopping by. Um, we'll see you again here real soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. -bye.